Hey, Goan, Chaplain C. Swindon. My name's Pippa and it's awesome to be here with you at your annual youth event. I'm so chuffed that we've all come together in front of our screens despite not being able to be together face to face, which of course would have been lovely. But I hope wherever you are that you're comfy, that you're in the comfiest seat in your house and that you're having a great day. You join me from the north of England. I'm recording this from Sheffield. And a little bit about me before I delve into our topic. So I work full time as a lay missionary, primarily working within the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in the UK. And I go all over the UK working with young people, uh, telling them about Jesus, helping them grow in faith. I help lead a worship collective called One Hope Project. And we're a bunch of Catholic creatives that love to use music and creativity to worship God. And uh, yeah, just takes me all over the place. My previous life used to be in advertising. I worked in advertising for six years in central London and gave up my job three years ago to go full time as a missionary. So it's my joy to be here with you today to talk about finding Jesus. I think that's the topic that you've been discussing today. And um, the first thing that came to my mind when I was asked to talk about finding Jesus is, well, in order to find something, you have to be looking, right? So I want to start by saying, what are you looking for? What are you searching for? I worked at Google for a little bit in London and um, obviously our search terms show a lot about the kind of standards in the country, what country are obsessed with at the moment and from the looks of current Google trends the, the recent searches are mainly about the Arsenal Liverpool game this week, um, how to make a face mask, people are obviously that's on the tip of everybody's tongues and uh, it looks like Love Island Australia is being searched for can't say I searched for that. I don't know whether you did. But in the midst of this time, I wonder what, like, what are you searching for? What are your search terms? Maybe they look a bit like those or maybe they're different. But when I was praying for you guys who would be watching this, um, I felt that maybe some of you feel like, well, this day is about finding Jesus. And I'm not sure I'm really looking for Jesus. Maybe that's what you're thinking subconsciously. And I have a question for all of us, really. Are you searching, are you looking for happiness? Are you looking for peace? Are you looking for satisfaction and for your life to feel satisfied? If the answer to those questions is yes, then I believe you're looking for Jesus. The truth is everyone in the whole world, all of humanity is searching for those things, happiness, peace, satisfaction. And I've discovered through my journey that Jesus is the answer to these things. But as young people in like, our current climate, we're in a culture that promotes standing out, being different, making yourself known, but just don't be too different, you know? Like we self-medicate to make ourselves feel better all the time in this time of searching. And we have to constantly choose what we think what we want to do, who we want to be, what we want to dress like, how we will find happiness. I don't know about you, but that search, um, I have found pretty tiring over the years. Pretty exhilarating in many instances, but pretty tough on, in other instances. And I wrote a spoken word about this sort of thing um, so I just thought, um, just a bit different, that I might start um, with, with the spoken word. Um, and it's called The Fight to Fit In. At what stage do we become aware of the fight to fit in? Nuclear family life might have been my situation, or maybe the negotiation of many chairs around the table was more the day in, day out, day in, day out. But the question always finds a way of popping up. What do you want to be when you grow up? 
an astronaut and famous footballer only lasts a season as we become more reasonable and teacher, accountant, doctor scrumming. Playground games and chat at school, we drool over the hip hype merch that we must wear. Don't dare to not care about how we're seen and what people say. The battle for approval begins early days. As we grow and learn and shake, shake, shake it off like Taylor, but sometimes these haters break you and it's not as swift and the words don't lift. Doing stuff because song lyrics tell me to. To be held, caressed. What a mess I'm in when I allow him to hold me again but I know he'll let me go tomorrow. Life on Insta, hashtag winning, pics or it didn't happen, fun and all. But when I take down my selfie because it didn't get enough likes, I start to think, am I living life free, properly? Long nights of anxiety, normal in society, I wonder what's the healing antibiotic? Everything's so chaotic. At 21, things may be more carefree and me and my hubby-to-be long to get married. Oh, that's too young, they say. Okay, but you're single at 28? What are you waiting for, they say. Find you a man, a girl that can. Better watch yourself, your, own, your ovaries only work till 35. What lies we adhere to day by day. To climb the ladder and make me a name, what a shame it can be to work gruelling hours. For what? Well, it may buy you some bricks, maybe in the sticks. It's only a two-hour commute. We can compute that if we leave the office by five. These things aren't bad, but they can wear the crown on the kingdom of me and I let it be. The words come creeping late at night. It's a fight to ignore as they come knocking at my door again. Is there more to life than this? We suppress the quest for a deeper life, numbing it with wine and fine dining, quietening it with Netflix and fun, 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 never get bored. But it remains, is there more to life than this? The question doesn't go out of fashion. If anything, it grows in passion as we spot more greys and wrinkles on the forehead. Where am I going and what's the point? I need a healer, an answer. I need a guide. What if we could live life under the breath of the guidance of the one that made us? The one who whispers, this is the way, follow it. I am the way, follow me. The one whose name is peace, oh I need peace. I can't abide by thinking that life is a set of circumstances meshed together under a few good and probably bad choices. This creator God, what if he's real? What if he knows me? I can't get him off my mind. This one, the beauty, this magnificence and scandalous love that comes from heaven to me. Why? Because he says I'm his beloved. Life is changing. I'm starting to see there's only one fountain of life, only one thing that will satisfy these aches. It begins Desiring authenticity over gold, faith over fame, wisdom over silver. There's been a shift in me and one that's ever growing, more living and loving. The fight to fit in fades away now. As we down our fake armoury and agree to being me, living in Christ's victory. A crowd of hearts alive. Confident in who God says I am. Brothers and sisters who don't compete, complete with hope. So whoever we are. A famous footballer, a singer in a rock band, a builder on their hands and knees, a taxi driver, a student, a priest and preacher, a teacher, an ad exec. You don't have to fit in with the status quo. Oh no. Life can be so much more. I wrote that spoken word uh, in the wrestle and the struggle of daily life as I was searching and seeking for a life that was more than I was presented. And I want to tell you a bit more about my journey and how I found God. Because we, we all have a journey and they all matter. Uh, I haven't had a huge conversion story um, of no faith going to loving God, but my life really has been radically changed by Jesus. I grew up in a Catholic home, 
uh, which I'm sure many of you have done. And I grew up in a really loving home, a loving home with parents who cared for me and put faith at the center of our, of our family. And I'm really blessed to say that. And I really would say that when I, as I was growing up over being a little girl, I really loved God. Um, and I think it, it wasn't that I ever stopped believing in God. It's just I started to question the relevance of him in my daily life as a teenager. When I hit about 17, I was completely wrapped up in searching for happiness it was like the thing I just wanted. I just wanted to be happy. I just wanted to be having a good time all the time. I'd had a really rough experience at school, a tough time at school. I, I was bullied at school and also struggled with um, comparison. I have a twin sister. And I, it was a real, it was hard for me growing up, really. I just didn't really know my place. And so I started becoming obsessed with this notion of being happy. And I had an idea of what happiness looked like. And so therefore, it, it kind of felt like God was the one who was always telling me not to do things and therefore was getting in the way of my plans and my happiness. And this picture grew up in my teenage mind that God was the one who was against me. Once he was a friend and it kind of felt like he'd become a rival. And I felt like I had to take my happiness into my own hands because God didn't really want me to be happy. So I had to live my own great life. And I started to live this life where I, I made sure I had this amazing group of friends. I got a boyfriend who was older than me, who wasn't a Christian, who, who wasn't a Catholic. And I cared so much about how I dressed, how I was perceived. I started smoking and drinking a lot and really just lived by my appetites and my instincts, really. Just quite a selfish life. You know, if I wanted it, I would get it. And all of this, like how I was perceived, the happiness in my life was dictated by what people thought of me, really. And this is what I put my hope in my ability to get people to like me, to receive pleasure. I lived off people's praise and their attention. This is what I was searching for. If we talk about what we're searching for, this is what I was searching for. But the problem I found <laughs> was that people did reject me. You know, I wasn't liked by everyone. I wasn't fancied by everyone. And I was, I was pretty insecure. And it, and it wasn't long before I was just living this life where it, the, the kind of life that everyone thinks will make you happy. I went to university and I was going steady with my boyfriend. And over this time, I was suffering really badly with anxiety. Now, I don't know if you suffer with anxiety, but if you don't, I'm sure you know someone who has. And therefore, you'll know how crippling it is. Uh, and I struggled with this very low self-esteem and it, it really got to a stage where I used to try and hide how much I was suffering. I studied drama at university so you wouldn't be able to tell but inside I was a nervous wreck um, but I was constantly just putting on this show and I remember this really key moment in my life where I'd been out with a group of friends for a night out and it was one of these nights where you think it's going to be like the best night ever and everyone's like oh man this is going to be the best night ever and then you're out and you're like it's kind of fun <laughs> like it wasn't that fun and I remember lying in bed that night it was like 3 a.m and owning up to the fact that that night actually hadn't been what I thought it was and I felt so dissatisfied. I remember having this overwhelming feeling of being made for more. And I hadn't been to church for a while. I hadn't been to mass for a while. And the only way I can explain it is I felt like I really missed Jesus. I really missed his friendship. I, I really felt so lost and I felt so little. And I came to this realisation that I just couldn't save myself. <laughs> no matter how hard I tried, all the things that I had thought would make me happy, that I had been searching for, 
just didn't. And God, in that moment, was so real to me. He made me see, he allowed me to see through his grace that he wasn't ashamed to come close to me in my uh, mess. He came so close and I realised all along that I had really been searching for him. And there he was. Take note of where I was in this scene. I was in my bedroom. That's where I found God. And sometimes we think we have to be in church or we have to be at the youth convention in the flesh for us to find Jesus, but that's not true. You can meet him right now, wherever you are. In Matthew's gospel, there's this incredible promise that Jesus makes that if we seek him, we will find him. And the goodness of God in my life is that I hadn't even quite realised I was searching for him, but he showed up and showed me that I had been. Jesus is looking at you right now. He's gazing on you in love. He's desiring to give you more from life than perhaps you know is possible. And this is the crazy thing about our Catholic faith. Like we don't just believe that Jesus came once in history and that's the end of the story. We believe that he's here now in mystery and he will come again in majesty. Jesus is here. And in that moment in my bedroom, I was faced with a decision a decision about how I wanted my life to look and what I thought life was about. And that's the decision we're all faced with. What do you want? Who do you want? What are you searching for? Some things I realised in that moment and that I need to keep realising and I encourage you to remember these three things. Firstly, God doesn't come and never ever came in the flesh for impressive good people. We don't have to prove ourselves, we don't have to be good enough, we don't have to be knowledgeable enough, but we do need to recognise our need for him. Jesus came for the sick, not the healthy. And I had to realise when I was faced with that decision I was in need and I wanted more of him. The second thing is that he wants to be in relationship with us. This isn't about duty or rules. This is about a relationship with a God who is alive and who loves you and who wants to set you free and make your life awesome. And the third thing that we do need to realise is that Jesus's invitation for more of him will never be forced on us. He's so kind. I spent some time in France last year hanging out with a bunch of nuns and monks. <laughs> I spent some time living in a community and there was this beautiful nun and she said, um, Jesus is really shy. Like, he doesn't want to scare us off. He invites us. But ultimately, we have free will. He respects our free will. This is our choice and we get to choose. How do you want to choose? For me, choosing God has completely changed my life. Finding his love, <laughs> putting him first, has given me such a sense of purpose and peace. More than I have ever known. He is the answer to what we're searching for. And now, I, I don't have the things that the world says 
we should search for, the, the world says will make us happy. I don't have an impressive career, a husband, I don't have children, I don't have a lot of money, I don't own a house, but I have everything because I have Jesus. Knowing God's love has changed my life. And my prayer for you today is that you would know how much he loves you. There's this awesome story that I'll finish with. I don't know if you've met the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. They're these amazing guys who um, are, yeah, they're friars. And there's lots of them that live in New York and also in London and, um, and all over the world, really. And they serve the poor and they wear these long grey habits. And I've become friends with some of them. And I heard this story once that, um, from a priest called Father Emmanuel. And he was saying about how he was traveling um, from New York to somewhere else. And he rocked up in security. And you can imagine that they get a lot of kind of like double takes when they go past people. And he was going through security. And there was this kind of security guard who stopped him and said, like, hey, are you a Catholic? And and Father Emmanuel, I looked down at his grey habit and he was like, yeah, yeah, I am. And um, this uh, security guard was a Muslim and he was asking him like, oh, so you believe that Jesus is God? And Father Emmanuel said, yeah, yeah, I do. And then this security guard said, well, that means you believe that God got tired. Father Emmanuel said, yeah. And you believe that God was hungry? Yeah, yeah, I do believe that. And that um, God needed to go to the toilet. And, and this is quite a big topic for many of our Muslim brothers and sisters, that they, they would find that really offensive, that the Christian tradition teaches that. And Father Emmanuel said, yeah, I do believe that. And this security guard said to him, why? Why would God do that? And Father Emmanuel said, because he loves us and he wants to be close to us. No matter how much we search for God, God is searching for us more. When we want more of the Lord, when we seek him, we will find him. And when we find him, our lives will be changed for the better. I want to encourage you today. Seek God. We need young people in the church who love Jesus. We need people who are willing to be different and are willing to run after God no matter the cost. I recognise as a young person myself that this is different. This is different to the world. This is countercultural. But if you need to hear one thing, let me tell you from one young person to another, it's worth it. But giving our lives to Jesus, like living for him, it's worth it. So let's end in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just invite you to close your eyes and picture Jesus in front of you, looking at you. He is with you now. He is there for the finding. Jesus. Thank you for your love, your extravagant love for all those watching. And I pray, Lord, that you would stir something new in them, a desire for you, that they would seek and find you, God. I pray, Jesus, that you come by your Holy Spirit into their hearts afresh, even now as I pray. 
that you would give them the courage they need to say yes to you. I pray that they would know more of your amazing love for them and that they would be blessed this day. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you have an amazing rest of your conference. Hope to see you soon. God bless.